verses this morning are uh, chapter 17, verses 6 to 10 and 15 to 18. This is a, uh, uh, the final prayer, if you will, of Jesus uh, in the upper room with his disciples before they head out for the uh, Garden of Gethsemane on that last night before he's arrested. And so Jesus here has spoken to his disciples and now he's praying to his Father in heaven. I have made your name known to those whom you gave to me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Not many people take satisfaction in being called weird. Some people avoid it, like the plague. Uh, my children had birthdays today. Last night we went to dinner. My son does not like to be put on display or to have people make a fuss over him. He's not here today so I can tell the story. We had little bags with some birthday gag gifts to take to the restaurant when we went to dinner. It was one of those uh, Japanese steakhouse places, you know, where they flip the food around. And he begged Tracy not to bring the bags into the restaurant. He didn't want anybody to know it was his birthday. He certainly did not want anybody to come over and sing him a song or to bring him a little cupcake with a candle or anything. Nothing to set him apart. He just wanted to kind of come in there, do his thing, enjoy his time, and leave. And that's the way a lot of people are. And I don't blame them. Sometimes you just don't want to be put on display. You don't want to be set apart and made the focus of people's attention for good or for bad. Some people see that as being weird. Some people see that as being normal. But we don't like to be set apart like that. We don't want to be put outside of the accepted mainstream or, or put on displays for others to look at and to perhaps laugh or ridicule. That's what happens. Jesus in his last night was praying for his disciples because he knew what was coming down to them. He had spent his three years with them teaching them all those things that God had given him to teach them about God, about what it meant to be a child of God. What it meant to be one who was beloved by God. One who was given the truth and would be given power to act on that truth. Verse 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. That term sanctify, sometimes we really get hung up on that. But what it really means is that we are made special. We are set apart from others. We are made objects of God's focus, of God's value. God's attention. 
Sanctification is that part that comes not through all those things we try to do to earn it because sanctification is an act of God. God is the actor in that, not us. A pastor whose blog I read, Brian Stoffregan, says, I, people get hung up on that word so much anymore that I don't even use it. He says, I just say it's about being weird for God. And think about it, that's true. I mean, to be in the world, but not of the world, means that you do things that the rest of the world thinks are kind of strange. Sometimes we take it as an insult. But we probably should take it as a compliment. If, if you're not going to cheat on your taxes because you don't think anybody's going to catch it, and you're called weird for doing that, well, maybe, maybe it's a compliment. If you're, if you're one of those people that actually let someone else go in front of you at the grocery store line, and people call you weird for doing that, maybe that's a compliment. If you stop and talk to the person begging for, for help on the street corner or at the metro entrance when everybody else is rushing by and ignoring them, and you're called weird for that, maybe that's a compliment. There's a story about a young teen, middle schooler, who was on his way to school, with him, or on his way uh, home from school with some friends as they're all going out down the sidewalks. And as they come by, they see this one kid whose arms are full of books and other things. And as he goes down the sidewalk, he kind of stumbles and falls and drops all of his stuff. And his, <coughs> his classmates walk by and kind of snicker and point and <coughs> laugh. A few of them throw out a few names like doofus or loser. The kid's down there picking up all his stuff and this boy says, <coughs> that's not right. So he went back and he, he, he knelt down next to the kid and helped him pick up his books and stuff. And the kid looks at him like, what are you doing? Are you here to make fun of me too? And he smiles at him and helps him pick up his books. And he puts him back in the boy's arms and he says, well, see you tomorrow. And he heads off home. And the kid leaves with his arm full of books going back down the sidewalk towards his house. And the next day on the way into school, he sees this kid. And he says, hey, how you doing? Didn't spend a whole lot of time. Not a big conversation, but just, hey, how you doing? As he walked into school. Now, what do you think his friends said about this boy? Hey, what are you doing talking to that loser? You can be like him. You can be friends with him. He's a doofus. He's, he's nobody. Come on, you guys are in school. That happens, doesn't it? I know what happened when I was in school. All the time. And I used to go along with it. I knew better. But I went along with what everybody else, all my friends, all my peers did. Because that was the thing you try to fit into. You try to go along with the world that's around you, don't you? You don't want to be set apart being seen as somebody that's kind of strange and odd. You need to lose face. You need to lose, you know, connections with people. Jesus is praying for his disciples not to be swayed by that. Not to allow themselves to be conformed to the world standards, to those things that draw us away from God and being loving in the world. <clears throat> not to... Not to avoid those things where we might accumulate the labels of being soft or easy. We're sanctified in the truth because we are blessed by God. We are claimed by God. We, each one of us in our baptism are set apart by God from the rest of the world. Now we're not removed from the world. There's never that promise made in any of this prayer. God is not going to say, well, Christians, here's your escape from the world. No. We're in the world. We are living this life. But 
we know this life is not all there is to it. We live in that freedom knowing, one, we know that we're sinful and we know that we have, we're not perfect and we don't have to try to pretend to be perfect. And we also know that we're forgiven. Each and every one of our sins, even if we don't remember them, we know God forgives them. And so we're free to go out and do those things that might be seem to be weird in this world where God has actually put us for a purpose. To bring that truth to others. To help maybe see those individuals who may have a need to understand that they matter. That there is something else besides all the constraints and conformities of society. Something that's uplifting about life. The boy from the middle school <clears throat> was going back to school the next day. He saw his friend, this kid again. He said, hey, how you doing? And as they're going through the hallway, the kid says to the boy who had helped him, he said, you know, that day you helped me pick up my books. I just cleaned out my locker. So I was going home to kill myself. But you noticed me. You said hello to me. I wasn't invisible. You didn't make fun of me. I like to think you actually cared a little bit. We don't know how God uses us in even the little nice things that come along with being weird, that come along with being different, come along with being set apart in the world. God uses us to bring his truth into being in this world to show that we are all beloved children of God each and every one of us. And to talk and think that way, <laughs> that is weird. But it's a divine weird. And so celebrate it. Revel in it. Take heart in it. Because you are cherished by God. You matter. Amen.